I'm so excited to share my day with you guys. Oh, come on, let's get started. Oh man, this is actually a lot of physical activity. <laughs> Tough it out for the video, man. Come on, don't show the people how tired you are. <laughs> okay, so one of the things I like to do first thing in the morning is get a nice drink of water. After I get some water, I walk over and get some food. Man, that's um, well, that's, that's pretty much all I do on a daily basis. <laughs> but, but maybe I should tell you a little bit about myself since I don't do a lot day to day. I've lived a long life. I've, I've had a lot of experiences. <laughs> For example, I was around when Disneyland first opened. Of course, I've never been there because I'm a dinosaur and and I don't have any money. Also, I'm in my own theme park uh, when people come and look at me. I'm basically a prehistoric Mickey Mouse. But I've had other experiences, wonderful experiences. I was in love once. Oh, was I in love? But our love was a forbidden love. Oh, Patricia. See, she was an iguanodon. And I'm not an iguanodon. And back then, people frowned upon interracial dinosaur relationships. Oh, I still remember the first day I saw her fighting that Dilophosaurus. Oh man, I used to leave hell in love, but our love had to remain a secret. So, we pretended not to notice each other until we got to our secret places. Oh, Patricia, how I miss you, my love. But my life hasn't always been so tragic. I didn't, I didn't mean to focus on the negatives, I just... Patricia was the love of my life, but now the love of my life is food. I bury my sorrows in delicious food and also naps. I love naps, they're the best. But I've had a lot of different aspirations in my life. See, when I was younger, I had all sorts of dreams. I was gonna go out and conquer the world and do things that no Ankylosaurus has ever done before. I was gonna be the first in my family to go to college. But then I found a different path. See, back in the 40s, I actually became my own private eye. I wanted to be a private we, but none of my friends believed in me. But I'll show them I said. I will be the best darn detective this world has ever seen. And so, I went off to discover mysteries and to solve crimes. If there was one thing I hated more than waking up in the mornings, it was injustice. So I looked all over the forest for a mystery to unravel, for a crime to take down. I was so sneaky, nobody ever saw me. I blended in with the environment, and I was basically invisible. There were times when I would stay out for an entire night, and the whole time I would just sit there, blending in with the trees. Oh, how my friends mocked me. Little did they know that I was their silent protector. I think that's gonna pretty much do it for my story, guys. Um, I really do have a wonderful life. I may sound sad and grumpy at times, but really I'm just happy to be here. But I'd like to leave all of you with one little piece of advice. You see, I may have a hard body, and a hard tail, but I'd never have had a hard head. Hard heads are for the packies. Don't be a packy. Just be the best person that you can be. All right, kiddos, I'm gonna go take a nap. Bye-bye now, thanks for watching.
watching my diary. See you later. You're right. <laughs> Today is uh, the day that I uh, get to do on my uh, dino uh, diary. And <laughs> I am, for one, a very excited. Hello, everybody. Uh, my uh, name is uh, Bruce. And I am going to tell you all about me. Obviously, I am uh, not from around here. I am from uh, the Orient. Where I was a great surgeon. You may not think I good surgeon because I dinosaur, but I great surgeon. Dino doctor is what they called me. Not to be confused by Rexy, who is the dino dentist. But uh, Jeff Goldsbroom, he was having some issues. We uh, found him in the forest. And so I take my scalpel and I open Jeff Goldsbroom up. And what do I do? I. Accidentally killed the Jaffa Gold Broom, and so to hide the evidence, I eat the Jaffa Gold Broom until I find out that it was not actually a giraffe or gold broom, it was a Jaffa Gold Broom's brother. And so we look for Jaffa Gold Broom so that I can bring him sorry basket. Mm. Everybody rubs a sorry basket when it's full of apricot and apples. But I uh, digress. I have made many good friends here, like Jim. Hi, Bruce. Hello, Jim. Please don't tell me to shut up. I will not tell you to shut up. Because I do not like it when people tell me to shut up. Oh, thanks. But I wait, appreciate Jim. that. Where, where you go, Jim? I got a party to get to. Jim, where you Shut up, oh. Bruce. I've changed. Where is he? I'm not the same Brocky oh. I used to be. Even though I'm pretty sure I used to be an Apatosaurus. I uh, see. It's kind of ambiguous, really. Well, I still have uh, my friend Jim. Shut up, Bruce. Well, uh, that did not go the way that I wanted. Could you guys uh, cut that part out of the video? Because, uh, also, while we're at it, can you cut out the part about the Jaffa Gold Brooms, brother? <laughs> I think we could just start the video right here. Hello. My name is Bruce, and I love to play all of the games. My uh, best friend to play all the games with is uh, Rexy. Except he uh, doesn't quite understand how to play the games. We like to play hide and seek together. And I have to pretend like I never see him even though it's very easy to see him. And then even when I see him, he pretends like I do not see him. It is very frustrating, but at least he plays the game with me. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm so good at this game. <laughs> he would never Where's find me. I can see you, right? No. Huge. <laughs> That's definitely not true. I uh, see are you, Rexy. <laughs> I am so hidden. Another one of my favorite things to do during the day is just to take a work. I love to work around and just say hello to everybody. Sometimes they look at me like they do not understand the words coming out of my mouth. But th that does not uh, stop me. I am too uh, nice. I will say hello whether you acknowledge me or not. Because of my niceness and know the no boundaries. And it all stemmed from uh, my uh, big wonderful bedshed manner from when I was surgeon. So, I want to review our wishes. If you have a dream, pursue that dream. Even if it leads you to killing a death of gold brooms to end the brother. We go in peace, my friend.
good old CO2 hospital. I think I've, uh, forgotten something. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm out of here before Spencer finds out you set another oven on fire. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Spencer will never... Uh -oh. oh, hey, Spencer, how's it going? Spencer was so wonderful when you stopped by. <laughs> hey, let me just go get my cookies. Um, actually, wait, hold on. They're this way. <laughs> let me just go get them real quick and I will get you down. I know how much you love my cookies. Let me just grab them from the, from the stove. Give me a second.
Oi, what a morning. How's it going, everybody? My name's Steve, and, uh, well, it's good to be out and free again. Uh, I've been in prison a couple times, it's a fun fact about me, I'm not sure why I lead with that every time I meet a new person. Usually makes them a little bit nervous, but the fact that I've got a hard head and horns also makes them nervous. So it just kind of goes with the theme of, uh, of my face. So I've been in prison nine times. Um, none of them were anything to do with my own fault. It was always someone else's fault. Uh, I just bad, but wrong time, wrong place. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but one good thing that came out of my uh, fourth trip to prison is, uh, well, I met my wife, Bobby. Hello, Steve. Hi, baby. How's it going? It's going good, love. Hey, did you forget to put the shrimp on the Bobby, Bobby? That's stupid. What? I didn't like that joke. It's not my fault your parents named you Barbie. It's not my fault that your parents made your face so ugly. Unbelievable. I can't believe you're always being so mean about my face. You know I can't control it. I even moisturize for you and everything. Well, you're constantly hitting your head on things. They it's not helping. That's true. It kind of makes my neck have a kink in it. I gotta go check on the tacos. All right. See you later, love. I love you so much. I love you too. Your big butt. What did you say? You know, life is a sticky molog. It's it's kind of tough. Something that people don't actually know about us is, uh, well, we're all gluten intolerant. All these humans think they're the first ones to understand the gluten intolerance, what it's really like. Well, I've been living with that for 500 years. Maybe not 500 years. I, I don't know how to count. I can't say my fingers, so it's always been difficult for me to count. I tried counting the stars one time, and I, well, I fell asleep, and uh, and then I lost. Hello, love. The tacos are in the oven. What? Who puts tacos in the oven? Spencer's gonna be so upset with you. I'm not starting fires. You always start fires. That's why you ended up in prison that one time. Love, I thought we talked about not saying anything about that. But that was the time that we met. Yeah, but it was a dark time. It was a wonderful time. We went to co-ed dinosaur prison. We should go back. No, love. You know, before I was here, I was actually in the army. And well, what I was used for is uh, when we needed to break into places... They would just have me thrust my head at the door and then we would get inside because I've got the hard head and the stiff neck. Break, break, break. I will tell you what, when I came back from the battlefield, I had a hard time adjusting to civilian life again. See, I just kept running into things with my head and my stiff neck. That's what they called me back at the academy, hard head stiff neck. And well... I kept busting things down and they put me in prison. I said, this is what I was born for. And I didn't care. They just threw me into prison over and over and over. I couldn't stop. I really had a hard time adjusting. It's okay, love. The truth is, I just, I wish I could stop doing it. I want to be here for you all the time. I don't want to be in prison. Well, I'll follow you wherever you go, love. You gonna follow me to prison? Yeah, I'll go back to prison for you. You can't keep lighting things on fire, love. Not even for me. Eh, uh, Spencer will get over it. Uh, you need to stop hanging out with Carl. But hey, speaking of hanging out with people, I've got my best friend here. His name's Bobby. Say hello, Bobby. Hello. See, the confusing thing is, uh, well, I talk in such a way that when I say Bobby, and then I say my wife's name, Bobby, it sounds very similar, and so it gets a little confusing sometimes. Yeah, it's weird. So when I say, hey, Bobby, I love you. I'm constantly thinking he's telling me he loves me. But I do love you, but as like a friend, it's weird. All right, I'm out of here. See you later, Bobby. Love Bye. you. You know, one of my biggest dreams that I've always had is I want to be an architect. I want to build. I don't want to destroy anymore. See, I've spent my whole life destroying things, running into it with my hard head stiffness. Well, uh, we've been over this before. I don't feel like I need to keep repeating myself. But I want to build big towers that lead up to the sky. And then I want to knock them down. No, no, I don't want to knock them. It's just hard. This is the way I've always been. And I want to change. I really do. It's just so hard to fight those natural instincts. Thankfully, I've got my wife here who who loves me, and she's she's trying to help me. And I try not to run into her with my hard head stiff neck, because when I do, she hits me back even harder. 
She's uh, She's got a hotter head and a stiffer neck, if you can believe that. But the biggest problem with my dream is, well, they don't let the stiggies into architect school. Steve, you can't even read. I can learn to read, babe. You know what? I believe in you. Well, you don't know how to read either. I was just trying to support you. Ah, uh, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry, love. I'm sorry that I keep calling your face ugly. Yeah, well, you should be sorry about that. It hurts I my feelings a lot. Just said I was sorry. Well, you better be. You know, in the end, I've got a pretty good life here. It is pretty good, love. And you know what? I don't even want to be an architect anymore. Love, if you want to be an architect, then we'll learn to read together. Are you are you serious? Yes, love. You're going to help me read? We're going to learn how to read together. Maybe on YouTube we can learn how to read. I'm sure there's a video on there somewhere. Guys, find yourself a woman who will go to prison with you and teach you how to read. But that's going to do it for us today. Thank you guys for watching our Dino Diary. And uh, well, be sure to stay tuned uh, for next week. Yeah. Maybe Bobby will want to do his. No, I didn't want to. I said Bobby, not Bobby. Oh, my goodness. I can't even believe you. Why don't you go put another shrimp on the Bobby, Bobby? I will make sure to put extra gluten in your taco tonight. I'm sorry. Hello, everyone. My name is Suzanne, and I am the Indoraptor. So many of you know me as a psychotic hand and sweater collector, but there's so much more that you don't know about me. Little did you know that I was raised in a laboratory. I was hatched from an egg. I never knew my father, but what I do remember are the hands. They poked and prodded. They chose when I got to eat. They chose when I got to sleep. They always got to choose what I got to do. Maybe that's why I'm so obsessed with hands. It's my weird, innate way to take control of my life and show those hands who's the boss. I'm in control. I get to choose what I do, whether I want to cut them off or put them in a drawer. Really, it just depends. But sometimes I feel like there's a hole in my life, like I'm missing something. Thankfully, I just usually push that feeling down deep down inside of me when I feel that way. And that's when I start cutting off hands again. I realized that my level of aggression may be a bit too extreme for people, so I decided to turn it into a more productive endeavor, and I've created a business with my hands. I call it handsicles. I put the hands that I've collected and I attach them to sticks. You can either use it as a back scratcher or you can eat it. Unfortunately, business hasn't been very good. The hand flavor does not seem to be appealing to most people, although Trevor does enjoy it because it is high in protein. That's the thing about the people around this part of town. They are so uptight. They're always wanting to be friends and sing kumbaya. Oh, oh, it gets so tiring. I don't need anybody. In all honesty, I prefer to be alone. I don't need friends. I don't need anyone. I don't even need you, Trevor. <sighs> Anyways, all that rampaging is making me so sleepy. But unfortunately, I have a business to run, so I can't just lay here and do nothing. But on the other hand, <laughs> I've got sweaters to knit. Ever since I met that little girl with the red sweater, I couldn't help but just get this itch to create sweaters. Maybe it's because I don't wear clothes and I'm always cold. Sweaters are so cozy and warm when you don't have anyone to cuddle with. They're very comforting. Unfortunately, no one else really seems to like my sweaters. They always seem to just fit me. I remember once when Rexy tried to wear one of my sweaters and he ripped it in half. I almost ripped his hands off because of it. I loved that sweater. It had pink little hearts on it and little happy faces and miniature hands. Hey, Susie, I know what you're doing. Hello, Jim. How are you? I'm so good. Have you noticed all the trees around here? Yes, I actually have. They're quite tasty, aren't they? You're so pleasant. I like you. Thanks, Jim. You know, I noticed that your hands are quite large. Hey, shut up, Suzanne. You You're a freak. shut up, James. You're a freak. You're a freak. I'm leaving. Don't follow me. Oh, man, why did you bring the cameras over here? This never ends well. I'm just, don't touch my hands. I know they're long and beautiful. Hello, Carl. No, stay away from me, you wacko. 
Uh, I promise I won't take your hands. My hands are actually really small. You don't want them. That's true. Oi, I do not want a handsicle. Oh, whatever. I Bruce. am a reaving. Stuck up. As you can see, I don't really get along with the people around these parts. The only person I used to get along with was Trevor, but even that changed. We used to be an item, Trevor and I. Back in the beginning, it used to be so different. Hey, Ben, how's it going? Hello, Trevor. How was your day today, beautiful? It's been wonderful. I had a wonderful snack of hands earlier. Oh, wow, uh, did you save any for me? Yes, I did. I made them into cookies for you. Oh, my goodness, you know how much I love that. Are you ready to go back and finish the sweater we were knitting together? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, babe, I love you so much. much. Oh, what I wouldn't give to hear those words again. What? No, I promised I would never go back. We're just too different, him and I. He wanted to start a family, and I just couldn't give him that. I would have had to give up my hands and my sweaters, and I just can't do that. No, I won't. I won't give it up for anybody. Not even Trevor. But if we did have babies, their hands would be so cute. See, this is why I can't be a mum. I'd want to eat them. And that is why I'm seeing a doctor. <laughs> you know I'm a dentist and not a psychiatrist, right? Wait, what? I can I cannot help you. Rexy, you said you were able to help me. Oh, <laughs> if you have a cavity. I know a really good doctor you can go see, Suzanne. Who is it? His name is... His... Oh, no. Jeff. No, don't... <laughs> Thanks a lot, Suzanne. You set her off again. I'm going to eat your hands uh, if you scream anymore. Oh, hey, I gotta go! See you, see you later! <sighs> Sometimes, though, I think I'd like the simpler life. Settle down, start a family, give up the hands and the sweater obsession, and just live a normal life with a husband, friends, a job. I don't even have a real job! It's so depressing sometimes, in all honesty. But sometimes, to decompress from all that stress, I like to take a little dip and go swimming. It can be so relaxing. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to go swimming today, apparently. I'm going to go home and I'm going to have a snack and I'm going to have some relaxing music playing. Oh, goodness gracious. I hate thunder so much, though, that I have to put earplugs in because I cannot stand it. Hold on one moment. I need my hands to put my earplugs in. Thankfully, though, we never have crazy weather like tornadoes ever. That would just be insane. Oh my goodness, it's another tornado! Oh my goodness, guys, look at the cloud from the sky. It is touching the ground. Oh, look, it's a tornado! <gasps> oh my goodness. Is that Bruce? Bruce, are you sure you don't want to try a handsicle? I swear that they're delicious. Oi, Susan. You must arrive me around. Oh, hey, Suzanne. I was just coming to check on you. Make sure you do okay. I know you get scared when there are the tornadoes. W what are you talking about? There's no tornado, is there? Oh, there was a tornado. Yeah, I was right over there. Over there. Really? <laughs> yeah, I knew you were scared. Oh, my goodness. No. I almost died. <laughs> the tornado is gone. It's, it's you don't a, know that. It could come back. It probably won't. <laughs> you don't know that. It might come back and try to take all my hands. <laughs> That's true, actually. <laughs> you know what? You never ah! really do. I'm, oh, I've made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I am not a therapist. I'm, I'm oh, going to go. I think I left my oven on again. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Pull it together, Suzanne. You have to finish this diary. I'm okay, I swear. I, I'm good. The tornado's passed. I'm okay. I think my irrational fear of tornadoes comes from my time in the laboratory. I just remember everything was so loud and everything was swirling around me. It was awful. Come to think of it, that's how my life feels a lot of the time. Especially inside my head. Everything's just twirling around. <laughs> I just get so emotionally dizzy sometimes. The only time I felt grounded was when I was with Trevor. No, Trevor. I miss you so much, Trevor. Come back to me. 
I am a, not a Trevor, I am a Bruce. Oh, Bruce, would you like to try a handsicle? I do not want a handsicle, woman. You must leave me alone. I cannot take it no more, please, no more. That's fine. My handsicles didn't watch you anyways, Bruce. Look at him sleeping so peacefully. You know, he never used to drink. It wasn't until I broke up with him that he started drinking to cope with our breakup. It's so sad and I feel terrible that I did that to him because it is my fault in all reality. Oh, oh. Ugh. Ugh, what a beautiful morning. But man, I was having the strangest dream. I was thinking that I heard Suzanne talking about our past relationship. How she wants to rekindle our flame. <laughs> Bro, that's, that's crazy. She'd never think that. I'm, I'm going crazy. Oh, Trevor. That's not crazy. I'm crazy. Maybe one day I'll be brave enough to tell you how I really feel and just how sorry I am. Hey, bro, you ready to go to the gym and get swole? I do not know what that means, Trevor. It's gonna be awesome, bro. We're gonna get such a sick pump. <laughs> okay. You know, on second thought, maybe I am better off alone. Hey, Suzanne, you got any of those handsicles you're giving out? You want to try one of my handsicles? Well, I did until you sounded so excited about it. Now I'm a little creeped out. Uh, wh why? All right, I'll try it. Thanks, Trevor. Uh, my name's Carl. Hey, everybody. My name's Trevor, and... Man, I don't even know how I really feel about having to do one of these things because it's not really that cool anymore, bro. Like, it would have been cool if I was the first one, but I'm like the sixth one and I have to go after Suzanne? I don't even know how I feel about that if I'm being honest because she's... She's the worst. Like, she's actually like a crazy psychopath killer, but... But that's a, that's a part of my life. I, you know, I don't even really worry about it anymore, bro. In all honesty, most of my past, I've just kind of shoved it down and I try not to think about it because it really just makes me sad and kind of depressed, bro, if I really like think about it. And I hate these things, uh, what are they called? Um, oh, Suzanne used to use the word, uh, emotions. I hate emotions, bro, so I try to just keep emotions out of it because, bro, let's be real, emotions are for babies. And girls. And especially girl babies. But bro, if I have to talk about my past a little bit, I can do that. Because let's be honest, bro, I can do anything I set my mind to. There's not anything in this entire world that I couldn't accomplish all by myself. I don't need friends or family or Suzanne or Dr. Oh. Okay, bro, well, there was this one time in my life where... I was on like a little bit of drugs, but not like crazy drugs, but just like uh, st steroids, bro. I mean, I mean, I don't, you know, I really don't want to talk about it right now. But I guess I can tell you guys a little bit about my rap career. I was pretty sick back in the day. I had some dope tunes. I was spitting fire. People thought I was a dragon. Uh, but that was kind of short-lived, bro. Um, let's talk about something else again. Like my alcohol addiction. Now, bro. This is the part of my life I'm not super proud of, bro, but it's well documented, so I feel like it needs addressing. Well, bro, he, so here's kind of the dealio, Fabrilio. Um, I was going through a pretty dark time in my life, okay? Suzanne and I, I mean, that I was dating this girl, and it just didn't work out, bro, okay? And I really, really, really wanted it <laughs> I really wanted it to work out, bro, but it didn't. Because sometimes things in life just don't work out. Because life sucks, and it's hard, and people say they love you, and then they walk out on you like they don't even freaking care about you. So I kind of got myself into a little bit of trouble, okay? It was an accident, though. I thought that if I just took one drink of the alcohols, that I would probably be fine. I mean, alcoholism doesn't even run in my family. Mostly because I don't have a family, but if I did, I don't think it would have ran in, in my bloodstream. But it wasn't until, bro, that the alcohol was actually in my bloodstream, like because I put it in there, 
that it took kind of control of my life for a little bit, okay? And it took the combined efforts of my friends Marshall, Blue, and Rexy. They, they kind of pulled me out of that. It was hard for a while, but with good friends, it really, really helped me. I mean, I don't have any friends, bro. <laughs> I'm a lone wolf, bro. <laughs> bro, let's be real here. <sighs> but it wasn't always like that. All right, fine, I'll talk about it just for a second. So, so when Suzanne and I were together, I, I I really felt like there was a future there. I had a lot of hope. I was a different Trevor back then. I, I loved people, and I loved Suzanne, but she didn't love me. At least she didn't love me enough to give up her freaky hand addiction. She went off and she started her handsicle company and kind of just left me behind. She said we could never have a family because, well, she was a psycho. Or did I say that? You know, it's kind of fuzzy. It was all the alcohol afterwards that just, it kind of messes with your brain a little bit, bro. But you know, sometimes I still kind of feel like I can hear her voice in my head. Almost as if she was right behind me, whispering into my thoughts. The whole situation's just kind of messed up, and I really try and just, like I said, not to think about it too much, bro, but if, if I'm being honest, I remember the day we broke up like it was yesterday. It was a dark and storm, well, okay, it was day, but it was stormy, but it sounds better when I say dark and stormy. That's how they start all of those awesome cartoons, bro. The <clears throat> I'm getting distracted. Anyway, so it was raining pretty hard, and I had to tell her, like, Suzanne, here's the deal. I want a family, bro. Since I didn't say bro as much back then, that, that came later. But I told her, bro, I want a family. And she said, and I want a business. I need to focus on my career and my hand obsession and my sweaters. And she said there was no room in her life for a family because she wasn't mentally prepared because she'd want to eat our babies. And I was like, bro, that's, that's weird, bro. That's, I wouldn't even eat our babies, and I eat, like, everything. So that was basically the end for us, bro. At that point, we were going in such vastly different directions that there was no point in continuing that life. I remember there was this horrible tornado that day. It was actually really terrifying, but I was so distraught that I actually ran towards the tornado. I wasn't even afraid of death at that point because my heart had already died. Bro, it was pretty rough. Like, my life is a tragedy, bro. There's some people who have lost, like, loved ones or limbs or self-respect, but me, I lost the love of my life, bro. And it's sadder than anyone else who's lost their loves of their lives because I have such a capacity to love. And that drove me to the bottle. And I, you know, I just, I never intended it for it to get out of hand, but it just did, bro. It just did. But it actually gets worse than that. Because I was so obsessed with winning Suzanne's heart back that I got myself involved in some pretty sketchy things, bro. And before I continue, I need to make sure that I actually have immunity here. Like, I can't, I can't go to jail for anything I tell you here, right, bro? Like, we're safe. Because what I'm about to tell you could get me in a lot of trouble. But after my breakup with Suzanne, I was obsessed with winning her heart back. I wanted so badly to impress her that I joined the Dinosaur Fight Club. Now, I'm breaking the number one rule right now by talking to you guys about it. But this is an important part of my life because I got into a lot of tussles. All right, I thought I was the toughest guy around at the time. And... You know, I started to get pushed around by all these littler dinosaurs, bro. And I'm like, what in the world's going on here? I'm supposed to be the baddest mamma jamma around, bro. And I'm just getting my tushy kicked by all these little baby dinos. But that didn't stop me, bro. My pride, it was just way too high. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not like me, because I never got high. I got... <clears throat> so anyway, I would spend all of my days... And all of my nights just fighting other dinosaurs trying to prove my masculinity. Because I thought for sure, if Suzanne, like bro, could see how strong I was, 
and how far I was willing to push myself to impress her to win her heart back, uh, that she'd come back to me, bro. I even picked on some guys that weren't even looking for a fight. I just went over and I beat them up. I'll tell you what, bro, like, when you beat up someone who can't even fight back, it makes you feel super tough and manly. But, but honestly, I just felt like a failure because whenever I picked a fight with one of the other dinosaurs in the group, they kicked my butt, bro. And I didn't even really know how to process that at the time because I didn't know failure. I wasn't a failure. Until, bro, like, I was totally a failure, bro. And then it's a harsh reality. I fought till I couldn't fight anymore. And then, and then faced with the reality of my shame, I turned to the steroids. All right, I wanted to be the biggest and the strongest on the entire island, bro. And, and I wasn't there. Then I didn't want to take the time to put in the work to do it normally. So I just wanted the results now, bro. I needed to win Suzanne back. <sighs> The scars on my heart were etched there by the stupidity of my youth. That's the title of my autobiography, bro. My publisher says it's too long, but it's the truth. And it's only recently, bro, that I've come to really accept and love the Indominus Rex that I am. And one day, Suzanne's gonna see that. And when she does, I'll be clean. Like, physically, like, cause I'm gonna take another shower this year, and also from drugs and stuff, too. This is gonna be a new year, a new chapter for Trevor. Things are gonna be different now, bro. Things are gonna be different. I mean, probably. Who, who really knows? A lot can happen between now and, like, <laughs> tomorrow. So, uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, oh no, <laughs> Carl, the camera people are here. Oh my, for the diary? Yeah. Oh no, woman, did you not set the alarm? No, I didn't. I gotta go get ready, oh my goodness. Okay, um. It's so embarrassing, wait, what? Are you following me? Of course, you gotta make sure you put your pants on correctly this time. Listen, Becky, I don't need your help, all right? This is my diary. You could just get the heck out of here, woman. Carl, I would not be following you if you put your underwear on the inside of your pants last time. I don't even wear pants, woman. I don't know what you're thinking. You always wear pants when the camera's on. I want to put you under another pile of rocks. Sounds like you guys need to go to counseling. Shut up, Jim. What do you know about marriage? You'll be single forever. Nobody ever love you. Yeah, Jim. Listen, honey, we're can I please start the video now? If people want to know about my life. I guess I can let you go, Carl. I'm just gonna go water the piles of rocks we got. Oh my goodness, now I remember why I love you. Hey, Suzanne, thanks for the handsicle. Oh, I'm so glad you liked it, Carl. I finally could scratch my butt. No! Oh, I bet you guys are all curious how I met Becky, the love of my life. We actually met at a wedding. Happened to be my wedding. But, um, you know, the, that other woman, she, it was tragic. She got buried by a pile of rocks and set on fire. I don't really know how it happened. Becky, you remember that very much? No. Carl, we met at a bowling alley. I, did you see my hands, woman? You think I could go bowling? What would be the point of that? It's a stupid it's answer. It's called those little garbage clippers that you pick up from the ground. You think I could use those little hook grabber things to pick up a bowling ball? I've seen you do it, Carl. You got a bowling ball for a brain. I'm going to go into a tree. Stay away from you, you crazy loon. Well, okay, I'll be honest. Becky's not entirely wrong. My wedding did take place. What are you doing? Why are you following me, woman? I just want to be a part of your dino diary, Carl. That's not true. You're just waiting for me to die so you can steal my inheritance. What inheritance, Carl? All you got an pile of rocks that on fire. Maybe for now, but one day I'm going to be a rich carno and you're not going to have any of it, woman, because you'll be under a pile of rocks. What was that? has a pile of ashes. Carl! What? Are you threatening to 
kill me again. All right, you, I'm going to go finish my diary, babe. I'm just going to get away from this lady and hide in the trees here so no one can find me. Hi, Carl. Ugh. Hi, Bobby. I guess it's about time that we probably get to the heart of the issue. I know you're all here because you want to know about the rocks and the fire. Well, let me tell you a story. When I was a child, my parents were killed by a pile of rocks. I mean, I'm the one who put the rocks on top of them, and, uh, but really it probably wasn't the rocks that killed them, it was the burning inferno of a fire that I put on top of the rocks that were also on top of them. But you know what, that's really my earliest memory. I think I was just born with it. Oh, oh my goodness, Becky, would you get out of here, woman? I was just getting to the fiery part of the story, pun intended. I love this part of the story, Carl. Well, I certainly hope you do, because it's going to be the ending of your story one day, you fart. Unless I burn you first. It's impossible. I'm immune to all sorts of fire and rocks. How? You know what they say. Rocks and fire may burn my soul, but you can... You the work. Bye, Carl. All right, see you later, honey. All right, finally I can Hi, start. Carl. You gotta be joking me! I was about to start another story. You see, when I was a kid, there was really only one thing I was passionate about, and that was fire. And so naturally, the thing that I wanted to do when I grew up was be a fireman. You can imagine my disappointment when I found out they actually got rid of fire. What a disappointment that was, and now I rebel against the establishment, and Spencer tried to keep me in line, and I'll set all of you on fire! I will rule this island in fire, and rocks. Everything will be ash before me, even Be- Becky, what are you doing here? I'm hungry, Carl! Yeah, you're always hungry, it's probably why there's so much of you. At least I don't have bumpy skin. That's it, we're not talking for five minutes. Hey, have you guys seen Jeff Goldblum? Yeah, why don't you go check that rock formation over there? Yeah, go tell him hi. Oh, God, do you hear it, Carl? Those were Jeff Goldblum is. Blue, I don't... I don't think he's being serious. Carl's kind of a psycho. Carl's a psycho? Hey, what are you saying over there, you little gremlins? You get back over here. I'll show you as a psychopath. <laughs> Carl, are you picking on those poor raptors again? Hi, Carl. Hey, Bobby, how's it going, man? You know what? I got to tell you guys something. I happen to be very popular on the island. You know... Sometimes I think that people just want to be my friends so I won't set them on fire and bury them with a pile of rocks. But I like to think it's because of my glowing personality. It's not, Carl. What? Woman, why are you still here? This is my dino diary, Oh, Carl. this is my favorite <laughs> rock right here. Oh, Leslie. How oh, I missed you. We love to go bowling together, you know. Who is Leslie? What do you mean? <laughs> what? what the heck was that? That was someone having fun, Carl. Haven't you heard of the word fun? What? Why is there a goat? I feel like I'm in a dream right now. What's going on? Would you like me to pinch you? Yeah, good luck pinching me with a little baby arm you got on this side of your body. You got those same baby arms, Carl. Excuse me, I have at least toddler arms, all right? Speaking of kids, Carl, why are we going to start having some of our own? We ain't never going to have kids, honey. I'm not bringing any children to this messed up world. There's a lot of freaks around here. Like you? Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, all right. I guess I'll give that one to you, Becky. But enough about me. I won't talk about me anymore. Instead, let's talk about my plans for the future. You see, I dream of a world where we have anti-firemen. Where somebody goes around and sets the firemen on fire. That would be a wonderful world that we could live in full of justice. And smoke full of ashes. You know, maybe this is why Spencer and I don't get along very much. It's because I'm always trying to set them on fire. 
It's very hard though, because he's always hanging out in the water. I almost got him this one time. We are on this island. There was a bunch of these humans in a boat. And then I poured a bunch of oil into the water. I almost got him. So I guess the moral of the story is if at first you don't succeed, just continue to burn everything down to the ground until you get what you want. So yeah, thanks for watching kids. I hope you enjoyed my channel diary and I hope you got to understand a little bit more about what makes me tick. Carl? What, Becky? Go to sleep. All right, see you later, kids. I'm gonna go burn. So let's go to sleep. That's right, Carl. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Welcome to summer. I feel like today is the official start of our summer season because I have finally broken out the grill and I am ready to make all of the food for all of my friends. We are spending the whole day at the lake even though we pretty much spend every day at the lake where we, we live here. <laughs> but today is special! Oh, another year where they forgot to invite me to the party. I think I'll just come anyway. I can bring my own trees! I, for one, am super excited that it's finally summer. I've been getting shredded all winter, all spring, and now it's time to show these puppies off. And by these puppies, bro, I'm talking about my sick 12-pack. On a completely unrelated note, guys, do you know if Suzanne's gonna be at this party? I'm just curious if, if she'll be there to see my, uh, I mean, just, you know, so I can totally avoid her, bro. <laughs> you, you know? Oh, man, this is just like Becky. She gets me up and makes me go to these stupid parties and now I can't even find her. I guess I'm gonna have to go by myself again. This is I don't even like parties or Mine? water. Mine? Water parties Mine? are the worst. Mine? Mine? Hey, Granny, I've got a question for you. What's that, Sonny? Are, are you seeing anyone right now? No. Really? Because I'm seeing all sorts of people here. It's very crowded today and I'm not sure why. Uh, that's funny. You kind of sound like a dolphin. Did anyone ever tell you that? And you sound like a smoker. Oh, but I'm not. Did you say you're snot? Hey, old man. Hey, son. I mean, I mean, Bobby. Hey, everybody. I'm a little bit scared of water parties. I didn't know if you knew this. Does anybody have any floaties? I really could use one. I've got a hard head and a stiff neck. Not good for swimming. Hey, Becky, where are you been? I've been looking for you all over this stupid island. I get right, Carl. Get right for what other barbecue I'm going to sleep. Why are you going to sleep? What are you doing, woman? The party's about to start. Oh, this should be a great time to bury you with some rocks. I threw the invitation in the garbage can! Why would you do that? We need that! We don't even know which lake we're going to! There's like seven lakes here! Oh my goodness. Why do you even keep this guy around? I'm right here! You don't have to talk about me in front of my face! That's it! We're leaving! See you later, nerd! Oh, well, I caught someone else in here besides me. You're a nerd too! Hey guys! Wait for me! I'm bringing the chips and dip! Jim, where are you going? I'm going to the party. I thought we specifically didn't invite you. You didn't. I figured it just got lost in the mail. It didn't. Oh, okay. I guess I'll just go back home now. Oh, well. I think I'm going to have to go tell Rexy that we are going to have a party crasher at our barbecue. But before I do that, I think I'm going to have to go run home and get some hand sickles for everybody. Um... 
either I am early, everybody forgot to party with today, or I once again showed up to the wrong lake. <laughs> I hate it when this happens. I really have to stop throwing the invitation away as soon as I get it. We, I am uh, very excited about uh, the barbecue that is happening on this beautiful day today. I wonder what the food uh, Rexy is going to be making on the grill. I wonder if the hot dog is actually dog. We eat that in my own country. And it is uh, delicious. It's better the brutal. I really do love a good barbecue, but it's more enjoyable when you have someone to spend it with. What? I'm sorry. Um, does anyone know if Trevor's gonna be there? Hey, hey, bro. I have a question. Um, can someone scratch the back of my leg right here? I got an itch right there, and I can't get it. I just, I really wish I had a handsy core right now, bro. Then I could scratch it. <laughs> I'm a, you are, shouldn't be here right now. I'm, just, I'm making sure it's really well done. Oh, Spence is gonna be so mad. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna walk away from this. Oh, this food is so good. Yeah, it's good because you didn't make it. That's not nice, Wait, Carl. Is there? I sense a fire in the area. I gotta go check it out. Let's make sure it's not one of my piles of rocks. You know, I kind of feel bad about not bringing our other friend along with us. You don't even know his name! How bad could you possibly feel? Yeah, I know his name is... I feel bad, okay? Oh, it is finally getting dark! I need to go prepare the fireworks! You know, Spencer said, under no circumstances can I touch the fireworks! Well, um... I don't see Spencer here, and I think that they would want me to do this, so I'm, I'm just going to go take care of that real quick. Oh, hey, Susanna. I did, had no idea you were going to be at this party. Hello, Trevor. Um, I've got all these abs. Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, look at the beautiful sky, babe, Suzanne. They are beautiful, aren't they? So are you. <coughs> oh, yeah, go, bro. We're under attack, mate. Everybody take cover, there's bombs in the sky! Oh, this is the best day ever, the sky is lit in flames! Kyle, you're a freak. You're a freak. Oh, hey Jim, I'm so glad you could make it! Oh, I thought I wasn't invited, so I was trying to be sneaky. What are you talking about, Jim? I invited you! Oh my goodness, the mailman must have lost your invitation again. I hate that guy. Yeah, me too. Oh man, I'm so happy to finally be doing my diary! How's it going everyone? My name's Jim! And I'm gonna tell you all about my wonderful story! Some of you may not think it's wonderful, but for me, I think it is pretty wonderful! When I first got here, I was so excited to make all of my friends! For me growing up, it was never hard to make friends. Everyone liked me. I was the cool one in high school. I was captain of my varsity basketball team. They called me the tree. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I ate trees and I fought like a boss. I don't know. Unfortunately, I experienced an injury, and I was no longer able to play the basketball. It was a hard time in my life where I lost a lot of kudos, but... Oh, hey, Suzanne, it's good to see you. I am not Suzanne, you tall freak. My name is Sullivan, but I am looking for Suzanne. She is, in fact, my girlfriend. Oh, okay. Bye, Sullivan! It's nice to meet you! Oh, ya. shut up. Oh, okay. As you can see, I don't get a whole lot of respect from the people around here, which is kind of annoying. It actually didn't bother me so much at first, but then it just made me more and more angry. And I think that one day I'm gonna snap! But when I get angry, I just try to think of happy things like trees and puppies. I had a 
a puppy when I was a kid. I stepped on him. In my defense, the ground is really far away from my eyes. But I digress. I actually am in a beautiful relationship with my wonderful girlfriend, Kim. She's wonderful. Say hi, honey. Well, okay, she's actually mute, so she can't speak. But it's so wonderful because she never tells me to shut up, Jim. She's the only one in my life who's never told me to shut up. And she doesn't have fingers, so she can't do sign language. Sometimes, though, she gives me this look like she wants me to shut up. But I think that's just her way of saying I love you. So we have a really wonderful life. And we're thinking about getting married soon. And then I can be at the altar and say I do. And then, well, I'm not sure how she's going to say I do. Because she can't speak. You know, in all honesty, sometimes I'm not really sure if we actually are dating or if I just follow her around and make it all up in my head. But I think we are. I mean, she never tells me to go away. So I'm just gonna assume I'm in a healthy relationship. Is it so bad to think that a positive thing can happen to Jim? No. I think it's good. Almost as good as this water! Speaking of water, after my basketball injury, I actually became a lifeguard! My girlfriend would tell you about it, but... Well, I guess I'll just tell you about it. So, her brother actually never wanted us to date! Her brother's name was Tim. He was actually my second cousin. So it's not weird, it's his second cousin, it's legal. Lots of weird dinosaurs, so who really cares? But anyway, I, I was a lifeguard, and because of my basketball injury, I couldn't move quite as fast as I should have been able to. So I wasn't able to get there fast enough while I was holding his head under the water. It was a tragic time for all people involved. That was so true. It was awful. Oh, man. We will always remember you, Jim. No. I'm Jim. I'm alive. Poor Jim. Oh, I'm going to go cry now. See you later, Tim. I'm, I guess sometimes people do confuse me with Tim, considering we sounded exactly alike. And we look exactly alike. You know, my therapist once told me that there is no Tim. And he just lives inside my brain. And I looked at him and said, He actually lives about 45 paces away from my house. And about 17 feet under the ground. That's where Tim lives now. And he never says anything to me about dating his sister. At that point of the conversation, my therapist called the police. And then I stepped on all their cars and I escaped. It was really hardcore, actually. And then I came back to my island and told everybody about it. But no one believed me, except for Kim. She always listens to me. She's only tried to escape about three times. I think sometimes she just gets confused as to where we live. So I'll just be taking a drink of water, and then I'll look up and she'll be gone. But I always can drag her down. It helps being taller than all of the trees. No one can hide from me. But let's shift gears a little bit and talk about my future and my dreams. See, I've always been the tallest one around. But I've 
never been quite tall enough. You see, I'm so close to the stars, yet I'm still so far away. I've always wanted to be an astronaut, so that I can go to the moon. One day I want to walk on the moon. I want to be able to jump around. But you know, being able to share my dreams with Cam make them seem so much closer. But then, when I look up to the sky, they still seem so far away. It's almost like I feel very extremely one emotion, and then very extremely another emotion almost out of the blue. The doctor said my medication would help, but I stepped on them. No more pills for Jim! I've been talking a lot to Spencer recently because he has a dream to fly. I just happen to have a dream to fly higher. So we're gonna go into space together. But thankfully, with my head just too far into the clouds, Kim is always here to bring me back to Earth. You know, it's really wonderful having that one person who will really listen to me. I don't know where I'd be without her. Probably a murderer! But thankfully, that's not the case. And instead, I'm a very level-headed, wonderful person with no baggage or emotional trauma. It's really wonderful actually being such a free spirit. Okay, bye. Hey everybody, welcome to my Dino Diary. Um, I'm gonna get to you in just a second, but I'm actually in the middle of an adventure, but you can come along. Come with me. You see, I was talking to some friends and they were telling me about this mystery. Hey, have you heard about the other side of the pathway? What do you mean, the other side of the pathway? You know, the pathway in the middle of the forest? Yeah, nobody crosses this. I'm gonna go check it out and see what's on the other side. Charlie, don't do that! It could be dangerous! Nah, just let him go. I'm going on an adventure! See, nobody's ever been to the other side of the pathway before. There's lots of stories and mystery all surrounding it. Some people say if you cross over the pathway, the whole island's gonna explode and the volcano's gonna go off. But I don't think so. I'm starting to think that maybe somebody's hidden something on the other side of the pathway, and if I go over there, I'll find it out. Just like Indiana Jones, maybe the Ark of the Covenant's over there. Ah. Oh. I'm gonna find out whatever it is, good or bad, we're gonna find out because my name is Charlie and I'm an adventurer! But there is one person who supposedly came from the other side. Maybe we should go talk to him. So, you've been on the other side of the pathway. Pathway? What pathway? Oh, I must leave. Goodbye, Charlie. Interesting. You know, something about that Rob fellow is kind of suspicious to me. He seemed to get out of here in quite a hurry when I mentioned the pathway. But I guess that means we're on our own. We just need to go out and find out what's on the other side of the pathway once and for all. And if anybody's gonna find out what it is, it's me, Charlie, the Velociraptor. The seeker of adventure, the solver of mysteries, the discoverer of rare antiquities. I'm actually trying to get a documentary crew to follow me around and see my event. Wait, you're here, and you're following me on my adventures. I had no idea I'd actually be successful in my my search for a documentary crew. But hey, you're here now, we're going on an adventure, this is basically my dream come true! This is so exciting! Thanks for coming guys, but yeah, seriously, let's get back to work. We gotta do a little bit more investigation. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Jim, I have a question. Can you see what's on the other side of the pathway from up there? What's the pathway? It's that path in the middle of the forest. What's on the other side? I'm confused. Ah, shut up, Jim. You and your help. Oh, okay. 
Once again, our sources seem to be pretty dry. I guess we're just gonna have to go figure it out on our own. What's the worst thing that could possibly happen anyway? I mean, the volcano could go off, sure. Someone else told me if I cross over the other side, I'll be hunted down by aliens. But I don't even believe in aliens. That didn't even seem very realistic, if you ask me. Besides, I'm actually the fastest velociraptor on the island, so I'm pretty sure I can outrun anything if it tries to get us. The only thing that maybe scares me is failure. So everybody knows I'm going on this adventure, so I cannot fail. I will come back with the answer. Here we go, we're gonna crash the patch. Oh. So you know, it's kind of scary over there. Besides, I, I don't see anything interesting at all. So, you know what? We saw it. We didn't see anything. So, let's just go back and just tell everybody there's nothing over there. Definitely nothing. Man, I'm so happy we came on this adventure and found out this information. Man, it was really keeping me up at night. What was over there, you know? <laughs> so let's go tell everyone. What did you see over there, Charlie? There was nothing. I crossed over and I saw absolutely nothing. And I'm fine. There was no aliens. Hey, Jim, by the way, there was nothing on the other side of the pathway, so you don't have to be scared, man. I'm still confused. Man, after a long day of adventuring, I love coming home and just having a big meal. You know, it really works up an appetite, solving mysteries and going to the far end of the island to discover new adventures. Which, now I guess we really need a new adventure. But I guess while we're looking for a new adventure, I could tell you a little about myself. See, from a very young age, I was always interested by the unknowns. I grew up watching murder mysteries, and boy how did they get my heart racing. And I knew that I wanted to solve mysteries, murder, supernatural events, all of it. I was gonna find out all the answers. For example, one time there was this terrifying ghost-like creature in the forest running around making terrifying noises. But you see, I don't believe in ghosts. So I had to find out the truth! And the truth was it was this Rexy and he spilled flour all over himself and he was crying because he screwed up his cookies. See, no mystery is too big for Charlie. But you see, being a solver of mysteries, sometimes it takes a toll. Because I'm always so suspicious of everybody that, um, it should be hard to maintain stable relationships. I'm trying to get better though, to not think that every time someone's speaking to me that they're hiding something. But it's, uh, it's a hard habit to kick, honestly. That's probably why my last relationship didn't work out. Yeah, I was dating this model, her name is Scarlett. Sometimes I still miss her. But really, this is... Oh, hey, Grandma! Did you know that Suzanne's got a clone now? I swear to goodness. A clone? Sounds like another mystery to be solved. But not really. See, Grandma just says things. I don't think Suzanne has a clone. Oh, no, she does not have a clone. She has her new boyfriend. I swear, I cannot keep up with the love life of all these dinosaurs. I mean, look at how many friends we have. Jeez, it seems like every other week some- Oh. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Bobby. But seriously, like, every other week there seems to be a new dinosaur popping up on the island. It's actually pretty cool. See, I've been trying to make more friends recently, like I was talking about. I'm trying to make more time for the people in my life. Even though some of them are kind of annoying. I'll race you to dinner, Charlie! See what I mean? But you know what, even though some of my friends can be pretty annoying sometimes, and sometimes they make fun of me for adventuring, they're my family, and I love all of them. This is a pretty cool place to live. I'm surrounded by people who love me. And I will tell you, there are so many adventures that to come on this island. So many mysteries still to solve. I have a feeling I'm going to be busy on this island for a long time to come. Thank you guys so much for watching my channel diary and for hanging out with me today. I'm sure I'll see you guys real soon. Bye, everybody! Oh, my goodness. It has finally come. It is time for me to do my Dino Diary World. Are you excited? Because I am so excited. I, I can't even breathe. <gasps>
<sighs> okay, that happens to me sometimes when I get excited. But hey, the first thing I would like to show all of you guys is all of the friends that I have. Some people think because, you know, I am the king lizard, <laughs> the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the murderer of all things, the eater of all the other dinosaurs. <laughs> um, some people think that I cannot be friends with some of the herbivores, but that is not true. <laughs> like Steve right here. He is one of my bestest friends. How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing all right, Rex. Eh? I've got a bit of a oh, stiff yeah. neck this oh. morning. Must have woke uh -huh. up with it, but I'm feeling all right. <laughs> okay, I'm bored. Oh. <laughs> Let's go somewhere else. <laughs> but honestly, it is really so wonderful having so many friends. It doesn't matter what side of the island that I go to. I am able to make all of the friends. Some people maybe think that they have to be my friend because I tell them if they don't eat my cookies, then I will eat them. But they know I'm kidding, hopefully. But sometimes I sneak over here to the herbivore side just to take a little nap. I'm pretty sure it doesn't freak anyone out or anything. It's just a relaxing time to hang out with some of my plant-eating friends. You know. But I suppose the point you are here for my Dino Diary is you probably want to know a little bit about my life. So now that I've had a little bit of a power nap, I will tell you about... Um, what was her name? Uh, Linda! I'll tell you about Linda and Rexy Jr. Oh man, Linda was my first wife. She was wonderful. She's actually the one that got me into dentistry. Oh, that was an exciting time. Uh, I had to actually set up my dentist office in a volcano because Linda would not let me have it near the house because she said that the drills freaked her out. So I put in a volcano and one day my, um, well, I have a lot of laughing gas because dinosaurs are very finicky. They're very sensitive with their mouths and their teeth. And it exploded all over the island. It was horrible. Everybody was laughing. It seemed like they were having a good time, but I found out later that they were very angry. But yeah, Linda, she, um, well, she died. Um, with, uh, she was eating some tacos, and uh, who really knows? I, I feel like... Tacos are a dangerous game. I just stay far away from them because Linda's tacos always made me kind of sick. And yes, she died after eating them. And also, my father died eating a taco. So, I have just decided to swear off the tacos forever. But you know, it was a really hard time for me when my father died. Because him and I were so close. Then he just had to go and eat the terrible devil taco. And now he is gone forever. But I tried to maintain his memory by by being a really good dad to my sons. Their names are Rexy Jr. and Philip. Oh man, I love my sons so much. So proud of them. Uh, Philip just came home from school the other day and he got an A on his report card. I was just so surprised because I didn't even know he went to school. Man, I am, I am such a proud dad. Oh man. Well, speaking of Philip and Rexy Jr., well, Rexy Jr. has decided to become a professional wrestler, so he's traveling all the time. I don't get to see him that much, except on the TV when I see him in the DWWE. It's so wonderful. But Philip came home from school the other day and was telling me that they went to the pathway. He said it was so scary. It cannot possibly be that scary. <laughs> You know, now that I'm standing here, I feel myself being filled with confusion and anxiety. Oh, man. But I'm sure whatever's on the other side of the pathway, I'm sure that I would be best friends with all of them. That's that's for sure. Because oh, I could be friends with anyone, even a robot, probably. I don't know. I've never met one of those before. But, you know, the pathway is an adventure for another day. <laughs> Let's go back to our normal adventures of what we do walking around the night. Wait! I forgot something. Oh, my goodness. I have forgotten my cookies in the oven again. Oh, man, Spencer is going to be very, very angry with me. But I think secretly, he just tries to be mad at me and pretend so that I give him cookies to make up. <laughs> I do happen to make the most delicious cookies on the entire island, maybe even in the entire world. If you think about it, the world is just like a big island in space. But let's not even go there today. That's a whole other debate. But I will tell you... <laughs> I have loved cookies since I was a wee little boy. <laughs> cookies always brought joy to my heart. 
You know, my dad and I used to just sit around at night, and we would eat the most delicious cookies that he made for me. He gave me his recipe. It's one of my best memories, and uh, oh no, this guy is so weird. Oh, oh man. Hi. Hello, Rexy. How are you today? I'm doing so good. Thanks for asking. Wait, what is your name? I don't think I've actually ever had a conversation with you before. My name is Robbie. It is good to meet you, Rexy. Oh, man, it is so great to meet you, too. You know, I always thought you were a little bit strange, but I don't know what I was thinking. You seem very pleasant. I am very pleasant. I am one of you, and I am happy to be drinking this H2O with you. Oh, man, what is h I'm happy to be here with you, too. Is it true your official designation is Harold? Oh, yeah. We don't talk about that. That does happen to be my official name. But you can just call me Rexy or even Sexy Rexy. That's what they used to call me back at the academy. Or you could keep you could call me King of the Island. Wait, where are you going? <laughs> okay. Uh, bye, Robbie. It was wonderful meeting you. Oh, man. I just love making new friends, especially ones that I've never met before. Those are my favorite new friends. Oh, man. <laughs> yes, it is true. Back at the academy, they used to call me Sexy Rexy. Some people are very confused by that until they see me. And then they have no more confusion. You see, I used to be a model for dinosaur onesies. And I made them look so good. <laughs> I have to tell you, the onesie sales went through the roof when they took the pictures with me on them. Sometimes I like to try to raise my hands to the roof. Uh, instead, I just roar to the sky because it looks much, much sexier. <laughs> That's why they call me the Sexy Rexy. <laughs> oh, man, but that was a long time ago. I don't do nearly as many sit-ups anymore or run as much. Oh, <laughs> hey, Jim, how are you doing today, my friend? Oh, man, raise the roof. Hey, Rexy, what are these cameras doing? Oh, I'm doing my dino diary, Jim. Oh, I wish I could do my dino diary. Jim, you already did your dino diary. Oh, man. But you can take over while I take a, a little siesta. <laughs> oh. oh, hey. Uh, have I ever told you guys about my girlfriend, Cam? We're doing really oh, well. Okay, Jim, I'm going to have Hello? to stop you right there. You went over this before your dad and Tyree should just... <laughs> Shut up, Jim. I'm going to take back over again. I'm actually going to go find Suzanne. I have to talk to her. Hey, Suzanne. That was fast. Hello, Rexy. Hi, Suzanne. How are you doing today? I'm... Hey, I don't care. There's somebody looking for you. He's another Indoraptor. His name is Sullivan, I think. Yes, it's Sullivan. <laughs> what, is he, what, what does he want with you? Do you owe him some money? No, he's my new boyfriend, Rexy. New boyfriend? <laughs> what? I thought you still were in love with Trevor. No, who told you that? It's just intuition. No. Okay, see you later. <laughs> oh, man. I love love so much. And this island is full of people who love each other. Nobody loves more than I do, though. I happen to have such a capacity to love. It's thanks to my massive heart. <laughs> I don't actually have an x-ray machine, but I feel like I'm like the Grinch times a hundred because my heart has grown so much. I think that's why I have trouble breathing because my heart's so big and crushes my lungs. <laughs> but I have to tell you, after Linda died, I thought I would definitely totally love again. And I was right because I met this wonderful, amazing woman. Her name is Samantha. And she loves me so much. She really appreciates me for the genius that I truly am. And she thinks I am kind and nice and responsible. And she thinks I am the sexy Rexy, if you know what I mean. Wait, hey, Samantha. Hi, Rexy. How are you doing, my love? What are you doing in the water? Are you taking a bath because you're stinky? Uh, I am not stinky. Stinky Rex, you come back here right now. I will not. I know when I should run, and this is one of those times. You are so right in so much trouble. Hey, do you remember the first time that we met? Of course, Rexy. How could I forget? It was a wonderful moment. 
You came into the dentist office with about 57 cavities. I can't help that I love cookies so much, Rexy. <laughs> well, I mean, you could have brushed and flossed and it wouldn't have happened. But then our love wouldn't have blossomed into this wonderful oak tree of passion. I'm going to go get my nails done. Love you, Rexy. Bye. <laughs> I love you, too. I'm going to go to sleep while you're gone. I love you. Yeah. Hey, Carl, do you think we should ever tell Rexy that we broke his family heirloom? What? Woman, why would we ever tell Rexy? <laughs> hey, why don't you shut up there, little man? This is not funny. No, we should never tell Rexy what happened to his heirloom. What did you do with the evidence? What do you think I did, woman? I put it in a pile of rocks so on fire. He'll never know nothing. Carl! What do you want? I'm an expert at getting rid of evidence. Why do you think I haven't been in prison for more than three minutes. Oh my goodness. What? We gotta go, babe! Alright, Rexy, how's it going? Beautiful day for, Hi, for a walk. For just walking. Oh, hey, Carl and Becky, how are you doing today? Oh, they're gone. Okay. Oh man, I sure do love that couple. They seem to really love each other. <laughs> Maybe one day I will tell them that I know they stole and broke my family heirloom, but I kind of enjoy them fearing me. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny. Also, I'm kind of scared of them, so I'd rather them be more scared of me than I am of them. I think that's a perfect little compromise we got. But I have to tell you one more very important thing about my life before we end this dino diary. You see, one of my biggest dreams is just to help everybody that I possibly can. And that includes all of my bestest friends. <laughs> Trevor would never tell you this <laughs> because he is a very proud man. <laughs> but I actually was instrumental in helping him get off of drugs and off of his steroids that he was using. And I did it through one of my motivational songs. <laughs> you see, I am not a motivational speaker. <laughs> I'm a motivational singer. <laughs> I make songs that encourage people and help them out when they are in tough spots in their life. Everybody is hard time sometimes, but we can use music to make ourselves feel better and to encourage each other to take a step towards redemption. And so I am very excited to show you guys my newest song. <laughs> Would you guys like to hear it? I'm very proud of this one. Oh my goodness. Hit it! This is a very special song that I wrote for my very best friends who are going through some hard times. Oh, Trevor, we'll start with you. Bro, you said you don't have to do this, man. Suzanne just left you. <laughs> Thanks, bro. But dry your teary eyes. <laughs> I'm not crying. Put down that bottle. And stop it with the drugs. Cause you are too awesome for that. Bro, you're not even fat. Your muscles are so very big. <laughs> Thanks, bro. So don't be a zombie pig. Oh. And I say, leave the fight club behind and trust that you'll only heal with time. My best friends! <laughs> oh man, I made cookies for you! <laughs> for one big family! <laughs> oh, thanks to me! <laughs> yeah, I'm awesome! <laughs> oh man! Old oh, man, your wife died! <laughs> I know how that feels! <laughs> Steve, you're stiff necked. That's true. But I hear that yoga helps. That's what Bobby said. Carl, you're a psycho. Bad. You need to take a nice cold bath. Right, don't Suzanne, walk. you really creep me out. I'm Rexy. But you could be a great mom. What? And I say, oh man. You don't have to shut up, Jim. Mm. And trust that. Jeff Goldblum will arrive <laughs> And you're my best friends I make cookies for you I love the cookies oh, My big family That's so true For thanks to me <laughs> Yeah, I'm awesome You know, I just want to say 
you may be in a tough spot. Life may have been so mean to you. Oh, you do not have to stay down. You can get up again. And I say, and he says, don't start that echo. Just know that I love you. And trust that. Trust that. Shut up, Echo. I'll always be here for you. Because you're my best friend. I love you, Rexy. And I make cookies for you. For one big family. <laughs> Thanks to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you all so much for watching my Dino Diary. <laughs> I'll see all of you guys later. Hi, everybody. Oh, man. This was so great. Huh. Yeah, I'm awesome. Oh, my goodness.